So we're going to start off with the head and neck area for examination. And so the first area to examine are the ones in front of your ear. These are called the preauricular nodes. Now the technique is to run your fingers gently over the surface of the skin in a sort of rolling motion. And both sides should be compared at the same time. Another set of glands are found behind the ear. These are known as the post-auricular glands. And the same principle applies, gently rolling your fingers over the area. And what you're looking for is a small mobile lump, which is usually not tender. The next area to examine is the area underneath the margin of the jaw or jaw line. These are called the submental glands. And again, the idea is to work your way from the angle of the jaw all the way around to the chin area in a circular motion, feeling for small lumps in that area. The most important thing to realize is that lymph node enlargement is extremely common, particularly with skin infection, tonsillitis, sore throats, ear infections. So therefore, one of the commonest reasons to come and see your dermatologist is if you have a raised lymph node and you might think it's related to your melanoma, more often than not, it's not related. Nevertheless, it's really important to know what lymph nodes feel like and the best time to assess your skin is straight after your first examination. The next area to examine is the neck. The neck has quite strong muscles in there. These are known as the strap muscles of the neck. And the chain of glands just run in front of that strong muscle. Again, you can work your way down the length of the muscle all the way down to the bottom, comparing both sides at the same time. The next area is just above the collarbone. So you isolate your collarbone and the muscle on the back. And in that triangle, you feel slightly deeper with some deeper pressing in there as the area has a lot of fat in it. Again, circular motion, feeling for lumps. A question that's often asked is how do you know you're feeling a lymph node? The best time to feel them is straight after the consultant or nurse has seen you and if they've given you the all clear, you know that that's normal skin. The final area to examine on the back of the neck are the occipital nodes. They're usually a very small group of nodes at the back here. Again, very common for them to be inflamed or raised, particularly with skin infection. And the motion is to roll that area under your fingertips. So the next area we're going to examine are the glands within the armpit or axilla. This is probably the commonest site to examine or have examined during your melanoma follow-ups. Now, essentially, the armpit consists of four sides and an apex or peak. Think of it like a pyramid. So I'm outlining, as you can see, the four walls of this pyramid and then the deep part of it, which is the apex of that pyramid, right at the peak. So as he's standing now, the skin is stretched and tight, which would make it difficult to assess. So it's really important to relax the large muscles in this area before examining. Now you'll often see the clinicians rest the arm on their hands to relax those muscles and we get to feel in a sequential way. So it's very important to feel all four areas in a sequence. So the way to do it at home is to begin to feel the front wall against your chest in a circular motion, the back wall 
in a circular motion. The far wall where my hand is, again in a circular motion. The superior wall up against the arm, using the arm as the area to rest the lymph nodes onto. And then finally, really quite deeply into the armpit, as far as you can go. And again, feel that with your fingertips. You have to often go quite deep in there. So the sequence of events should be the four walls examined and then the apex of the armpit examined. And obviously you can compare that on both sides. Often during lymph node examination, depending on which part of the body is involved, the variety of lymph nodes examined will be different. But there are occasions when all the lymph nodes are examined. This part of the video will be showing how to examine the groin. This is often best done with the patient lying flat, uh, which relaxes the muscles in the area. And the important part of this part of the body is to locate the bony landmarks. So the first landmark to feel for is the hip bone. This is known as the iliac crest, but it's essentially the prominent part of your hip bone that you can feel. And the second bony landmark will be the pelvic bone or the pelvis. So you'll feel that just deep in the groin there. And then you need to imagine a line that runs between the hip bone and the pelvic bone. This is called the inguinal ligament. And these are the inguinal nodes. So they roughly run in a chain along that line. So small, tiny nodes are really, really common in this area as the groin has a large amount of bacteria and often the small glands are up. There is also a smaller second chain of glands that just run vertically down the inner part of the thigh just near where it meets with the pelvic bone. So running your fingers again in a rolling fashion, feeling for small lymph nodes in this direction, would be part of your examination. Again, it's important to reiterate that the best time to examine your skin and to get to know it is to do this straight after you've had a clinical examination by a professional. If they're telling you on that visit that there's nothing to feel of any significance, then you know that that part of the skin feels normal and therefore you know what's normal and it's important to know what's normal so that you can know what's abnormal. One final area, a very small area of the body, is this area behind the knee. There are small glands present here that very often are not raised. But for uh, patients with melanoma that occur below the knee, then this is sometimes an area that is felt. Now, as the patient is standing, the skin is extremely tight and therefore not in the right position to feel for glands. The right position is with the legs completely relaxed and bent, often in a sitting position. This relaxes the large muscles or hamstrings across the joint. And again, it's a question of putting both hands behind the knee, rolling the area under your fingertips and feeling for small mobile lumps in that area. Again, it's important to reiterate that small lymph nodes are quite often felt and these are often inconsequential as the area behind the knee drains the foot and the foot often has a large number of infections, including athlete's feet in growing toenails and all these kind of things can actually cause low-grade lymph nodes. So to begin with, uh, I always have my patients seated and that's the best way to feel lymph glands uh, from the waist up. And often we do that uh, symmetrically because lymph nodes are usually not symmetrical in their enlargements, uh, especially abnormal lymph nodes. So we often use two hands and we start in the posterior occipital region and occasionally 
you feel lymph glands. Now this gentleman has a very hard lump in the back of his head, which is not a lymph node, and you have to distinguish bone from a lymph node. But up here he has about a two centimeter firm bony protuberance. It is not a lymph node, and it's nothing of concern. As you come down, you just palpate with your fingers until you get to the posterior auricular area, and lymph nodes can be felt there. Usually they are abnormal, even when they're quite small in this location. And you use your fingers gently, and then you come down to the general neck area. There's another place that's important with the preauricular lymph nodes. And you feel with your fingers, gently, symmetrically, and you don't usually feel preauricular lymph nodes. Even small ones would be of concern. May mean an infection, may mean something more generalized. As you come down then to the mandible, or the, uh, uh, the angle of the mandible, um, the parotid gland may be felt in this location. In this uh, gentleman, we don't feel the parotid gland, but it will be symmetrical and may overlap that angle, and they are not lymph nodes. And then you come down along the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and you palpate for jugular lymph nodes. And you go up and down, gently if you can, <clears throat> all the way down to the clavicle. And these would be the jugular lymph nodes, uh, cervical lymph nodes. And what's very important to distinguish is that there are submandibular salivary glands, which are symmetrical usually, maybe slightly different one side from the other. And this gentleman has a salivary gland right here, which is about one and a half centimeters and small, and he has a smaller one on this side. But they are symmetrical, and they are not concerned, and they are not lymph nodes, in my judgment. The other thing you have to be aware of is that the carotid arteries are here. And very often, you will feel the carotid artery or carotid bulb and, not, and interpret that as a swollen lymph nodes. But lymph nodes do not pulsate. And they, when they pulsate, that means it's obviously a carotid artery. And they are in this location. Now, this gentleman has a very small lymph gland on the right side in the posterior cervical region. Right here, it's probably no more than three millimeters. It's flat. Lymph nodes that are normal are usually flat and ovoid. Lymph nodes that are, not, are more abnormal are spherical. And that you can sort of tell by your palpation. You come down, and the most important area to feel is the supracubicular fossa. Now, sometimes it's a little better to just bend the neck forward to relax this area. And you take your fingers and you push right down over the clavicle and see if you can roll your fingers over any nodules. Now, these are most important because they are not usually found normally after infections. And if they are enlarged, they often indicate some process which is deeper in the body. And the most important one is on the left side. And as you probably have read and remember, the left superglutal lymph node is called the sentinel lymph node or Virchow's node because it was an indication that there was serious trouble in the abdomen. Now, why in the left superglutal fossa would that indicate abdominal disease? Well, you will recall that the lymphatics of the abdomen drain to the cisternic chili and then go up the thoracic duct and they dump into the left side, left jugular vein. And if there is malignancy in this location and it is spread to a lymph node, very frequently the first sign of that disease is a swollen and firm left sucrobivicular lymph node. And you shouldn't feel a lymph node in this location, at least normally. That doesn't mean that they're always bad, but that it should raise your suspicion. On the right side, occasionally 
the thoracic duct will split and send some lymph and cells to the right side, but the intrathoracic lymphatic strain to the right supracavicular fossa. So this is another very important place to feel. And then you continue to feel around and make sure that it's symmetrical. Be sure to distinguish the, the muscles from the carotid vessels. The hyoid bone is here and it shouldn't be confused with lymph nodes. It's firm. When you push on one side, it goes to the other. And uh, many young medical students or doctors will confuse the hyoid bone and the larynx. Hyoid bone is higher, but it's bony and it moves. You can look at it and inspect and see that there is a concavity on each side, and that's reassuring. But finding lymph nodes in the infracubicular fossa is almost always abnormal, very commonly associated with breast cancer or malignant lymphoma. And uh, he has neither. And the way to do it, or the way I do it, is I put my hand on the shoulder because I don't want the patient to withdraw. Some patients are very ticklish. In others, it hurts, and the tendency is to withdraw or tighten up. And then you reach up. Now, patients are awfully very concerned because they sweat, and that's normal. And if you're a doctor, you're to accept that and wash your hands afterwards. And you go way up into the apex and it's uncomfortable. And you just draw down along the chest wall. And as I do that, he can feel as I have, I flip a few small lymph glands there. And usually a patient, especially in this location, will know when you have felt lymph nodes. And you keep coming down. More rarely you'll find lymph nodes in the pectoral region. Almost never will you be concerned about lymph nodes which are lateral, that is in the outer part of the uh, axilla, and often I don't even examine there. I will push my fingers, the dorsum of my fingers there, to make sure I don't miss something, but most of them, or almost all of them, are felt with your fingers immediately. When I'm over on this side, then I feel for epitropular lymph nodes. And the hand, the arm should be relaxed, and epitropular nodes are found just above the uh, <coughs> lacrinon, and the only way to feel them is by rolling your fingers vertically up and down, not laterally. Because when you do it laterally, you'll find the tendon, <coughs> biceps, uh, triceps tendon, and the uh, <coughs> and the, the nerve, the ulnar nerve, and those things are normal. But when you go up and down, if you find something that you you know you roll, that's a lymph node. And or normally you don't feel anything there, but a small node, especially in a worker, is not abnormal. So we do it on the other side as well. We hold the shoulder down, we go way up. And once again, this gentleman has a small lymph node in his axilla right there. He feels it when I pull it. It's about uh, three to five millimeters, soft, of no concern. And then we do the epitrochlear as well. I feel his tendon easily. He feels it as I roll it, and the nerve is in there too. I'd like to feel the lymph nodes in your axillary area. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll get you to uncover your underarm area, please. Mm -hmm. Just going to tuck this in. Thank you. And is it okay if I touch your underarm? Mm -hmm.
Any pain when I do that? No. We're going to check underneath the chin. Is that a submental? Going along that submandibular. It's along the sides of your jaw. And checking the tonsilla. Moving up in front of your ears. That's the preauricular. And then the posteriorcular. Moving up the side to the occipital. And then we're going to check down along the front of your neck. And then to the back, making sure I can't feel any lumps and bumps there. If you could shrug your shoulders up and forward, please. Okay. And then pressing either side of the clavicle. So there's no issues there. And relax for me. I'm just checking the posterior chain at the back of the neck there. So I can't feel anything there at all. So we now need to check over your arms, if that's okay. So for a lax arm for me, I'm just going to press around and make sure I can't feel any lumps and bumps there. Good. So there's nothing there. And we're going to do the same again on this side. So just pressing in. And I can't find anything there. That's grand. So if you'd be kind enough to take your shirt off and then we'll have a look in your armpits to see if there are any issues there. So if you relax your arm onto mine, just relax down, keep that shoulder nice and relaxed for me. So I'm just going to press at the back. This might be a little bit uncomfortable. To press at the front. And press along the inside of the arm against the, your arm there. That might be a little bit uncomfortable and then flat against the chest wall. That's fine, there's no worrying features there. I will do the same again on this side. So if you relax your arm onto my opposite, let me take the weight, I'm going to press in at the front, and then behind, then pressing up along the inside of your arm. That can sometimes be a little bit uncomfortable. And then finally against the inside of the wall. Okay, there's nothing there. Can relax down for me. A thorough clinical examination should usually include both a systematic inspection and palpation of the clinically relevant lymph node stations. The most important stations are the head and neck area, the axilla, and the inguinal area. Consequently, the lymph nodes are usually examined from cranial to caudal. Around one-third of all lymph nodes are located in the head and neck area, where they can be found superficially and are therefore easily palpable. The following lymph nodes should be included in every palpation. Suboccipital, retro and preauricular, submandibular, submental, posterior triangle of the neck, and those within the area of the internal jugular vein which lie deep within the neck and may be palpated ventral or dorsal to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Additionally, the supraclavicular lymph nodes should be palpated as well, since enlargement of these lymph nodes is often associated with malignancies. Abdominal tumors that metastasize via the lymphatic system, such as gastric cancer, will often result in an enlarged Virchow node in the left supraclavicular fossa. Carefully palpate the individual lymph node stations. To facilitate differentiation between lymph nodes and muscles, the area that is palpated should be as relaxed as possible. Every palpable lymph node is considered enlarged. If there is enlargement, pay attention to consistency, tenderness, mobility, the number of enlarged lymph nodes, and any erythema in the affected area. Multiple fused lymph nodes are referred to as conglomerates and are highly suspicious for malignancy. After palpating the head and neck, continue by examining the axillary lymph nodes, which can be divided into different groups as well. The pictorial, or anterior, group is located in the anterior axillary fold and is responsible for the majority of lymphatic drainage of the chest and chest wall. 
The subscapular, or posterior lymph node group, is palpable deep within the posterior axillary fold. It drains parts of the arms and the chest wall. The brachial, or lateral lymph nodes, drain the majority of the arms and can be palpated in the area of the proximal humerus. All of the lymph node groups just mentioned then drain into the central group, which is palpable at the base of the axilla. The subclavicular, or apical group, represents the last lymph node station before the lymphatic vessels drain into the venous system. This group should be examined together with the cervical, or axillary lymph nodes. In this patient, the examiner starts by palpating the pectoral group behind the lateral aspect of the pectoralis major muscle. Afterwards, he palpates the central group, followed by the posterior group in the area of the posterior axillary fold and the brachial group of the upper arm. Distinguishing between lymph nodes and surrounding muscles is best achieved when the arm is relaxed and lowered. Afterwards, the superficial lymph nodes of the inguinal area should be palpated. They are divided into a horizontal and a vertical group. The horizontal group lies below the inguinal ligament and can therefore be palpated parallel to its course. This group is responsible for draining parts of the external genitalia, trunk, and lower back. The vertical group is located adjacent to the great proximal saphenous vein and drains lymphatic fluid from the lower extremity. Examination of the inguinal lymph nodes is best performed with the patient lying down. As a lymphatic organ, the spleen should always be a part of the lymph node assessment since splenomegaly can hint at a systematic inflammatory or malignant illness. The spleen is generally not palpable in healthy adults. A pathologically enlarged spleen is palpated under the left costal margin during inspiration as the inferior edge descends to the examiner's fingertips. If an enlarged spleen is already suspected, palpation should begin further down. The examination may be facilitated by gently lifting the left flank of the patient ventrally. With the increase of oral and oral pharyngeal cancer, it's really important that we give our patients a lymph node exam prior to doing our oral examination. So the way we go about this, we have our patients naturally sitting right underneath of us. So visually we can see how the anatomy looks, looking for any uh, bilateral differences between the anatomy or the musculature, and also looking for any swellings that could be evident. Now, uh, to do the lymph node examination, I'm gonna use my fingers, the pads of my fingers only, and I'm gonna place them in the respective areas. And I'm going to either do a circular motion of palpation, or I'm just going to pad as I travel along and check each respective area. I'm starting off in the preauricular area. I'm gonna go right around the ear, to the posterior auricular area. And as I come down, I'm going to move anteriorly to the angle of the mandible. And I'm gonna follow the border of the mandible anteriorly, checking all of those nodes. First off, I'm going to be squeezing the skin in that area down to the submental area. As I come back, I'm going to not go as much with my thumbs, but I'm going just maybe a little bit more inferior to the border of the mandible and slightly medial. And as I come back to the border of the mandible, what I'd like to bring your attention to is the location of the jugulodigastric node. It's located just underneath the angle of the mandible. It's the largest lymph node in the chain. And it's the one that really reflects a lot of disease patterns when it's available. So I'm coming down, checking that area underneath the border of the mandible, underneath the angle of the mandible, looking for the jugular digastric node, and then following 
the sternocleidomastoid muscle anteriorly until I get to the supraclavicular area, and then I come back and switch to the posterior area of the SCM muscle until I get back to the occipital area. After that, things are feeling very well, so we can go on to our intraoral exam. Now, Andrea's of normal height and weight, good muscle definition. Sometimes our patients might have a greater mass that require us to manipulate the position. In that case, I'm gonna have the patient turn to the left. That allows me to get a little bit more deep to the anterior of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and also across the other side where they are turned. And I'll have them turn the other way to check the same thing on the angle that they've turned from and on the angle that they've turned towards. Thank you, Andrea. I'll have you come back up. So really important to do the lymph node examination prior to uh, doing any oral examination just due to the fact that we can't see the oral pharyngeal area. And a painless swelling mass in the neck is usually our first evidence signs of any type of carcinomic episode. So thank you very much. Hi, my name's Lois Baldry. I'm one of the skin cancer specialist nurses at the Bristol Dermatology Centre. Today, I'm going to show you how to check your lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are found in several areas of the body, predominantly the head, neck, armpits, and groin area. Skin cancer can spread to the lymph nodes, so it's important to check them regularly in order to detect changes early. It's advisable that you check your nodes once a month. It is important not to do this too often, otherwise you may not notice any changes. It should be noted that not all swollen glands mean cancer. It is common that if you have a sore throat or a cold, your lymph nodes can temporarily enlarge as they fight infection. Enlarged lymph nodes are not usually painful and they often feel like a pea, olive or smooth pebble under the skin. To check your lymph nodes, you need to check the areas closest to where you have had your skin cancer removed. It is important to check both sides of your body so that you become familiar with what is normal for you. So now we're going to show you how to check your lymph nodes um, from home. I've got Harriet here with me today who is kindly going to demonstrate how to do this. First of all, we're going to show you how to check your head and neck lymph nodes. If you start with um, using your two fingers, you want to do a stroking motion down and the in front of your ears. That's it, and you're feeling for pea-sized or marble-sized lumps. Next, you want to feel um, down the side of your neck. You want to, again, check both sides of your neck, but start using maybe your right arm and with the flat of your hand, tip your ear down towards your shoulder and with a stroking motion, go down towards your chest. That's it, perfect. And you want to do the same on the other side. Perfect. Next, you want to check behind your ears. So with two fingers, you want to do a nice stroking motion straight from the top of your ear down. Perfect. So from where your jaw bends, you want to pinch that area, just gently, feeling for any lumps. Then you want to come along underneath your jaw with two fingers, come underneath the jaw to the front and back again. Don't tip your head back too far. That's it, keep your head in a nice neutral position. Next, you want to feel behind your head so with two fingers, if you want to tip your head slightly back and do a stroking motion along where your, the nape of your neck is, that's perfect. Finally, you want to check any, for any lymph nodes behind your collarbones. So if you just bring your shoulders forward slightly and shrug, that's perfect. And then you want to feel into the dip, that's it. Perfect. So now we're going to show you how to check the lymph nodes under your armpits. 
So Harriet, if you can take your right hand, um, you want to use the flats of your fingers as best as you possibly can. It is awkward. And you want to keep the left shoulder as relaxed as you possibly can. So you can start with having your hand on your hip. Um, you want to place your fingers into your armpit and you want to press up towards your shoulder. You then want to roll your fingers towards your rib cage and feel in circular motions just as you're doing. So now you want to use your thumb um, and if you press down as you are, perfect, and you want to feel the tissue between your fingers and thumb, excellent. So finally, you want to move your hand up to the top of your arm and have a feel under there. Perfect. So we're now going to show you how to check the lymph nodes in your groin area. Harriet's going to have a feel along the area where her leg bends, feel slightly above that line and below that line in a slightly circular motion. Perfect. All the way along. And then there's an area of lymph nodes down the inside of the leg in a, in a V shape. And it come, they come down to about short level if you were wearing a pair of shorts. And of course you want to check both sides. I'm now going to go through the examination of the lymph nodes systematically from head to toe. Examination of the lymph nodes is important in people who may have infectious diseases, fevers, or any evidence of lymphadenopathy in any of the regional beds. So be sure to clean your hands as always before examining the patient. This reassures the patient as well as protecting both of you. First thing, you need to know where the lymph node beds are. In the head, submental, submandibular, the anterior triangle down the front of the sternocleidomastoid, turn your chin towards, towards me, towards me. So the sternocleidomastoid here, along the posterior triangle, along the back of the sternocleidomastoid, anterior to the trapezius muscle, and then in the occipital region uh, under the occiput. The supraclavicular fossa on both sides and then the infraclavicular fossa. Preauricular and postauricular nodes should also be checked. There are actually some diseases for which nodes in that area are quite specific. So now let's go through the exam. We'll now palpate these lymph node beds. I examine three of the lymph node beds from the front. The preauricular, right here in front of the ear, postauricular, and the occipital. I examine the occipital from the front because your hands palpate very easily in this position. So you just reach around to the occiput and you're palpating right underneath the occiput and then forward and then down the back of the neck, rolling the tissue underneath your fingers. Okay, and then I move to the back in order to palpate the front of the neck. <clears throat> Again, the hands palpate very comfortably in this position. You can palpate the submental and submandibular nodes. And I like to do it symmetrically, so I'm palpating both at the same time in this position. And then down the front of the sternocleidomastoid, retract the muscle a little bit so you ensure you're feeling under the anterior border. And then right down to the insertion of the sternocleidomastoid, and pay particular attention in this area. The famous node called Virchow's node may be palpated right here under the head of the left sternocleidomastoid and indicate uh, carcinoma problems coming up from the abdomen. <clears throat> then we come down the posterior aspect of the sternocleidomastoid and the posterior triangle along the anterior border of the trapezius bilaterally. And when you and lastly the supraclavicular fossa on both sides, 
extending out laterally from the heads of the sternocleidomastoid. Good. And that completes the examination of the lymph node beds in the head and neck. Next, we'll move on to examination of the lymph node beds in the chest. Start by exposing the chest, and we'll point out where the major lymph node beds are. Now we're moving below the clavicle. The clavicle defines the upper part of the uh, chest itself, the infraclavicular nodes in this area, and the axillary lymph node beds. And these are fairly complex. They exist under the border of the pectoralis muscle and the apex, under the border of the latissimus dorsi here, and then also in the, uh, down the axillary artery and vein. And it's necessary to palpate all of those areas, and I'll demonstrate that now. We're now going to examine the lymph node beds of the torso, starting with the infraclavicular fossa just below the clavicle. <clears throat> and this area is palpated over the pectoralis minor muscle, and then up into th towards the coracoid process on both sides. Next, we're going to move to the axilla. The axilla is a complex area. And there are several lymph node beds we need to pay attention to. Along the border of the pectoralis major, into the apex of the axilla, along the anterior border of the latissimus dorsi, actually down into the middle of the axilla, and then lastly, along the neurovascular bundle as it comes out into the arm. And we need to palpate each one of those lymph node beds. It's important that the shoulder be completely relaxed when we do this, since we're trying to palpate under the muscles that actually uh, influence the shoulder. So I start by taking the palm of my hand with the fingers extended, pushing it high into the axilla, and then raking down with my fingers while relaxing the shoulder down. And you're trying to roll any lymph nodes down along. So it's up here, and then you're raking down with your hand to try to catch those lymph nodes. Next, palpate under the sternum, or pardon me, under the pectoralis muscle, right down the border of the pectoralis, and then along the border of the posterior fold of the axilla, which is the latissimus dorsi. And lastly, with the other hand, it's easy to palpate up in the apex and down the neurovascular bundle as it uh, descends into the arm. Sometimes it may be preferable to palpate the posterior axillary fold from behind. Again, supporting the patient's arm, trying to get him to completely relax that arm, and then your fingers come underneath the anterior border of the sternocleid, of, pardon me, the latissimus dorsi and feel for nodes in that area tucked underneath the muscle. And that completes the examination of the right axilla. Notice that most of the exam was done with the left hand. And then we'll repeat the process when we move to the left side using the right hand for much of the, of the examination. We're now going to examine the left axilla. Once again, it's important that the shoulder be completely relaxed by supporting it with your left hand. And most of the examination is going to be done with your right hand. So we start with the fingertips placed high up in the axilla. Remember, we're going to examine the lymph node beds high in the axilla and down the lateral chest wall. Underneath the posterior border of the pectoralis major, underneath the anterior border of the latissimus dorsi, and then down the neurovascular bundle as it uh, descends into the arm. So first we put the fingertips high in the axilla, fair amount of pressure here, and rake the fingertips down the chest wall. Uh, any enlarged lymph nodes will slide underneath your finger. Next, fingertips go under 
the border of the pectoralis major, sliding the muscle out of the way so you can get underneath and feel against the chest wall. And then similarly, on the posterior axillary fold, underneath the anterior border of the latissimus dorsi. Okay. And lastly, feeling down the neurovascular bundle. Personally, I find that this may be easier to do switching hands and doing it with your left hand in this position. On occasion, you may want prefer to feel the lymph nodes along the border of the latissimus dorsi from behind. Again, so relax the shoulder here. And then we're going to feel under the anterior border using the fingertips. This allows you to really get your fingertips under the border. This can be uncomfortable for the patient, so be gentle and feel along the chest wall as well. <clears throat> Lastly, don't forget to feel the epitrochlear lymph nodes that are right here behind the elbow in this area. And they may be enlarged with problems in the hands and forearms. Okay. Another way to examine the axilla uh, <clears throat> is to support the patient's arm on your examining hand and then to place your other hand, in this case the left hand, on the shoulder and this helps compress the tissue and bring it down into the area where you're examining. You can also use that to help manipulate the pectoralis on this side. So this is an instance when you're using both hands. Again, <clears throat> you're going to support the arm on your examining hand and use the opposite hand to bring the shoulder down so that the tissues are brought into approximation. And you can actually use bimanual palpation between your two fingers in this, uh, with this technique. So that's another useful way to examine the axilla. After completing the examination of the axilla head and neck, we're going to now move to the inguinal lymph nodes. We ask the patient to lie down on his back. And then we're going to examine the inguinal areas individually. To examine the inguinal ligaments, we're going to do that one side at a time, and you want to expose the area from the anterior superior iliac spine over to the symphysis pubis. The inguinal ligament runs in this direction, and the lymph node beds are inferior and oftentimes a little medial to that. So again, start well above that area, palpating with the flat of your hand and rolling the tissue along. You know you're in the right area when you can palpate the femoral artery, which I am right there. And remember the lymph nodes run along the neurovascular bundle, so you're basically following that area down into the leg. You want to extend at least 8 to 10 centimeters anteriorly, and don't forget to palpate medially as well, right over to the symphysis pubis. Okay, and then we just repeat that on the other side. Again, exposing the area, anterior iliac spine, down to symphysis pubis, inguinal ligament runs here. Femoral artery is right here. And we will just palpate under and inferior to the inguinal ligament, rolling the tissue, and again, continuing down the anterior aspect of the thigh, 8 to 10 centimeters, and extending medially, and right over here to the symphysis pubis. And that completes the examination of the inguinal lymph nodes. Very common to feel small, less than one centimeter inguinal lymph nodes that are perfectly normal. And that completes the lymph node examination. We're now going to start. Please let me know if it's uncomfortable at any point, okay? Yep. Right, so I'm just going to start with, with the ones just beneath your chin. Okay, and now I'm going to move on towards the angle of your jaw. Okay, and I'm going to go down. Okay. Are you okay there? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Okay, Jeff, so I'm now gonna move on to the back. Okay, sorry, this might tilt your head down slightly. Thanks. Okay, so I'm just going to put my hands on your neck to um, check the thyroid. Is that okay? Yes, it is. So, just going initially, is there any feelings of tenderness as I palpate around here? No, there isn't. Super. So that's the isthmus. There's no issues there. And checking over the lobes of the thyroid, that's normal. And just checking the position of the trachea, that's nice and central. If you could take another sample of water, please, and hold it in your mouth. And then swallow for me, please. Fantastic. Just going to check around to see if there's any other lumps or bumps. Now I'm just going to see if there's any other lumps or bumps. So checking submental lymph nodes. Checking for uh, submandibular, checking the tonsillar, parotid, preauricular, postauricular, checking behind at the occipital, okay, and then checking our posterior and anterior cervical chains, okay, and then checking along the clavicles. So that's all fine, thank you. So, I'm just going to wash my hands. Uh, could, could you tell me your name? Lila. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you for coming to help us today to do this little video. And I just want to find out if you've got any swollen glands anywhere. And because I don't think it's totally necessary to undress you, I'm not, but we will ask you to just lift up your tummy because I want to feel something in your tummy. Okay. So, first of all, let me move that beautiful hair out of the way as sometimes people have um, swollen glands in their neck. I just want to feel to see if you've got any strange lumps or bumps in the neck like that, move your hair out of the way. So I'm going to feel for the anterior triangle of the neck, submandibular, and the parotid area, posterior triangle of the neck, pre and post auricular, and occipital. For me. And there are a few other places that we have to remember a potentially um, source of a glandular larger. So can you open your mouth like a lawyer and stick your tongue out for me? Ah, dear, right. Okay, so you haven't got an enlargement of your tonsils, you can shut your mouth now. And then each axilla to find out, and sometimes people are a little bit ticklish there, so I'm going to try and avoid any tickly, funny stuff there. Um, one at a time, that's it. Fantastic. Yeah, I think that's not uncomfortable. Mm. Was, it, was I being uncomfortable? <laughs> so bad. And then the other thing is the top of the groin, which is a slightly funny place to feel, to find out that you've got some inguinal glands. And then just pull that up for me a little bit. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm just going to ask you to let your tummy go nice and soft. Okay, and what I want you to do is do some nice breath in and out for me like this. I'll show you. Each time I put this on your tummy, I want you to just do those nice breaths. Off you go. And classically, because splints can be very large in some cases, you feel from over on this side, which is what I'm doing. You're doing that fantastically well. Mm -hmm. Very impressed. Thank you. And if you have suspicion that splenic enlargement will be subtle, can you just roll towards your side, towards me a little bit? Just roll onto your side a little bit and bring your whole body over there. There's a good girl. And just do that special breathing again. And nice breathing. Fantastic. And you haven't got any enlargement of that. Pull that down. Right, thank you. Um, now I'm going to palpate your lymph nodes starting with the occipital nodes, moving to the postauricular, preauricular, tonsillar, submandibular, submental, okay, and then the anterior cervical superficial and deep. On the other side, 
superficial and deep, and posterior cervical superficial and deep. Good. And then your supraclavicular nodes. Good. Everything appears healthy and normal. You're examining the lymph nodes. You'll be using the tips or pads of probably your second, third, and fourth finger and using skin moving strokes that I'll demonstrate for you, kind of skin moving circles. Remember that when you're doing the lymph node exam, you're basically covering geographic areas where lymph nodes might be enlarged. You may well do this exam and have nothing that you feel abnormal, but you're you're attempting to cover the spaces and the geographic areas where the lymph nodes might be enlarged. You'll start with the preauricular, which is the area right in front of the ear, and again, you sort of notice the skin moving circle with the fingertips of your hands. Move backwards to the occipital nodes, and a good way to have the patient uh, relax that skin for you is to have them tip their head back and then you can sometimes feel that better. You want to make sure that your patient has good exposure of their supraclavicular areas so that you can do the uh, posterior and anterior cervical lymph nodes. Remember the boundaries of the posterior triangle are the trapezius, the clavicle, and the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. So on both sides, simultaneously, you'll cover the border of the trapezius, across the clavicles, and then behind the sternocleidomastoids, and then fill in whatever space you haven't already covered. The next lymph node group is over the sternocleidomastoids, and again with skin moving circles, you'll cover that space. When you do the anterior triangles, you'll want to do them separately because we're going to have our patient turn their head toward the side that you're examining to loosen up that skin a little. The borders of the anterior triangle are the front of the sternocleidomastoid, the midline, and the angle of the chin. So now you're going to come down the front of the sternocleidomastoid, up the midline, to the angle of the chin, and then fill in. Then you can do the submandibular and submental node on that side. Then you have your patient tip their head to the other side, there, sort of like that, and use your other hand to go down the front of the sternocleidomastoid, up the midline, to the angle of the chin, fill in, then turn your finger for the submandibulars. And you're done with that part of the exam. The next exam is the uh, re-examination of the supraclavicular nodes. And to do that, you have your patient take one hand, put it on their hip, and kind of roll their shoulder forward. This opens up the supraclavicular fossa. You can feel over that clavicle again and then hook your fingers over and have the patient bear down and feel if you see anything present to your fingertips. Same thing on the other side, that hand on your hip, roll your shoulder forward, feel over the clavicle, hook your fingers over the clavicle and have the patient bear down. Good. Perfect. Hi there, my name's Andrew, I'm one of the final year medical students. Could I just confirm your name and date of birth, please? Sure, it's James, 13th of December, 1989. Nice to meet you, James. James, today I've been asked to examine you. I'll be assessing for any swollen glands in your neck, armpit, or groin. I'll also be examining your belly as well. Would that be okay? Yes, that's fine. Great. Do you have any pain anywhere before we begin? Uh, no, I don't. Great. James, I'm now going to feel for some of the glands in your neck. James, I'm now going to examine for any enlarged glands in each armpit. If you could just take your top off for me. James, I'd now like to examine. Do you have any pain in your right shoulder? No, I don't. Great. I'm now going to support your right arm.
I'd now like to move on to feel different areas of the tummy. Can I just check before I do that you don't have any pain at all? No, I don't. James, I now need to press a little harder. James, could you now take some deep breaths in and out for me? That's the end of the examination. Thank you very much. Today I performed a lymphoreticular exam on James, a 29 year old male. I did not identify any lymphadenopathy or hepatosplenomegaly. For completeness, I'd like to perform a full blood count and blood film.